Hello, hello everyone. So, we are going to be doing Genesis um, 4 through 9 because I just want to start getting these out now because I'm way ahead, guys. I'll be honest, I have now gone on to Exodus and it's so amazing. So, I want to get you all through Genesis so we can all move on to Exodus, Exodus together. See, I can't say because I'm like excited. So, I'm going to start with chapters 4 to 6, which is the fall of man in Cain and Abel. So the story of Cain and Abel, you've got Abel, who is a spiritual soul, and you have got Cain, who is a selfish soul. <clears throat> they both had good jobs. Um, however, on their offerings, Abel put more thought and work into it, and Cain almost lazier. And so therefore, um, Abel got more respect off God for the offering. This obviously in turn made Cain very jealous. So what does Cain do? He kills his brother. He kills our Abel. Okay. But not only does he kill Abel, he then goes to God and God says, where is your brother Abel? And he lies to God. He goes, no, no. Now, God didn't need to ask this question because God is all-knowing. He knows everything. He didn't need to ask. He knew exactly what Cain had done. But he gave him that choice to tell the truth. And, you know, he didn't. So, therefore, unfortunately, he got punished. Uh, so, not only did Cain sin once, but he sinned twice. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie. Um, and later in this is so exciting because we also get to see our first ever rainbow baby, Seth, who comes to Adam and Eve. So if you don't know about Cain and Abel, that is Adam and Eve's children. Um, it is Cain first, Abel second. So Cain's the firstborn and then Abel's the second child. Um, so even though Cain had done wrong and had to be punished, God still cared for him and protected him. He made sure that no one would kill him. No matter what we do, God still loves us and protects us, even if we aren't worthy. Were they? <laughs> worthy. That's unconditional love. It's a bit like what we are with our children. No matter what they do, we'd always love them. And and that's kind of how God thinks of us. We're his children. Um, so when God saw the evil and sin that the that had fell upon the earth. You know, he was saddened. And I'll be honest, I've got to say, it comes across like he's heartbroken. He's put all this effort in to creating everything. And then Satan comes in and he goes, I'm going shit on it. And that's kind of what he's doing. Um, so it's all done with good intentions from God. And along comes Satan and puts evil into the hearts of man. So, I mean, I'll be honest, when I read this, I cried. I did cry at this part of the Bible because I felt so sorry for God doing all this work and, and making all these beautiful creations for it to all be ruined. But then he feels really sorry that he did it. Like he almost, he, he almost like breaks my heart. It's like a guilt. I'm so sorry that, that I, I created this, you know? Um, so anyway, fast forward the story a little bit. He brings on the flood, but he saves Noah and his family. And it does actually state in the Bible that Noah walked with God. So was it some form of angel? I don't know. Because remember, he lived for 950 years. That's a long time. That is a long time. And then we go on to chapter 7 to 9. See, they're not really long, these ones. Um, we've got Noah's Ark. So Noah did literally everything that God asked of him. And he trusted in God 100%, 1000% even. Um, Noah was actually 600 years old when the flood came upon the earth and um, he then lived after the flood for 350 years so he was 950 years when he passed away <clears throat> how, how do you know what I mean we wouldn't get that now that shows how different the world is now to what it was back then so the flood lasted for 40 days and 40 nights to rid the world of all evil and sin. Um, obviously, you know, with Noah's Ark, God kept Noah, his sons, his wife, and then a male and female of each animal. You know, God gave him all the directions. You need to make the width this, the height this. And you know what I mean? He gave him all the directions and he, he made it. He made it. 
Um, God felt responsible that he created life for good and Satan added the sin to men. So in order to rid it, he brought on the big flood. He, however, saved Noah and his family. Noah was a perfect example of what God wanted us to be like. The fact that God is so powerful that he can do this still blows my mind. It blows my mind. And we are made in his image. So how powerful are we if we really sit there and put our minds to it? Um, that's what you've got to think of. So the flood subsides after 40 days and 40 nights. Um, but this is where, so within chapter 7 to 9, a dove comes in. Now, is this the Holy Spirit? We all know the Holy Spirit is symbolised by a dove. <clears throat> and we all have a part of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is not a person or a being. So we are all actually created with a part of it in our hearts. So it is protecting us and helping us. Um, now then, God makes a covenant with no. If you don't know what a covenant is, it's a promise. So he sits an, like an agreement, shall we say. He sits and makes an agreement with Noah and he never lets it down to this day. After Noah gave him the burnt offering on the altar. So you have to have read this, guys, because I'm not reading the whole Bible. So you need to read the Bible. Um, I'm just going through the cliff notes and, and the notes that I've taken. OK, but it does say after he Noah had given um, he'd built an altar for God and given him a burnt offering. God says to him, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and cotton, winter, day and night shall not cease. Then he blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fear the earth. And then he, he basically goes on to say that then he, he makes humans superior to the animals. Okay, So we, we then become superior to the animals. <clears throat> so God also goes on to say, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his image. So God did not want any human to take the life of another. If they did, they would surely die. Men should not decide who lives or dies. That is God's choice only. That is only up to God. He also, in this promise, made, like I say, man, us, like humans, um, superior from all other living creatures. And this is where, between seven and nine, he allows us to eat meat. We can then start eating meat. Um, so going on these as well, you're going to see a lot of Canaan, which is actually Palestine now. So it's actually Palestine now. And that is basically, um, my notes from four to nine, chapters four to nine. So we can go through that, but make sure you're reading it, guys. Make your own notes on it and let's have a chat about it. We do go into more detail in the subs group. If you're not in there, you can always feel free to bob in. The link is in the description. Uh, sorry, it's in the Bible. Uh, it's not in the Bible. It's in the bio of my Instagram. I will get there in the end. But yeah, so that was really quick. I just wanted to do a quick overview for you. Um, and then next time we'll go into the others because there is some quite long chapters coming up as well which I've made a lot more notes on. Um, so next, um, we'll probably do, we'll do 10 to 13. I think that's going to be one of its own because it's quite a long one. So 10 to 13 is going to be on its own. And then 14 to 16 and 17 to 19 will probably be together. So we're getting there. There's only 50 um, chapters as well in it. So, but yeah. That is it for that. If you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll try and answer the best I can. Just don't ask me where the women are because I've got a sub. <laughs> that has got me looking into that right now. So I should be able to answer that shortly. So bear with me with that one. Um, but yeah, until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay protected. And I'll catch you on the next episode. God bless everyone.